Hello everyone, uh, I'm so pleased to be with you uh, today on this lecture which we, in which we'll cover uh, an overview of seismic data interpretation. In this lecture, we will uh, cover uh, an introduction about the seismic data interpretation. Uh, this is followed by the interpretation process including the structural seismic interpretations, seismic sequence stratigraphic interpretation, reservoir and lithology interpretation, and we will see some uh, evidences of the uh, structural style on the seismic data itself. Uh, this will be followed by seismic interpretation work workflow in which we will uh, 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 introduce or cover the interpretation steps uh, how we tie uh, seismic to geology or uh, seismic to well tie. Uh, we'll discuss the uh, time versus depth uh, and the interpretation for false and horizons uh, formed by mapping these interpretations and then the conversion of time uh, to depth. And we will end up with the goals of uh, the seismic interpretation in the hydrocarbon exploration. So let's start with the introduction. Uh, generally speaking, uh, I will show, I will remind you with a seismic reflector. And as you see uh, from this uh, plot, uh, you can see, for example, these uh, two layers here. We have a bit one and bit two. Uh, as we have two bits, we'll, we'll have uh, one interface in between the bits, uh, both each bit will have its own uh, density and velocity, as you know. And the, when the seismic energy sends, the uh, the seismic source emits the energy, it will propagate downward and then reflect from the interface to the surface. Part of this incident data will uh, refract to the uh, uh, deeper layers. Uh, the, the seismic reflector is a boundary between bits with different properties. Uh, there may be a change of lithology or fluid fill from bed 1 to bed 2. Uh, these property changes cause some sound waves to be reflected, as you see in the plot, uh, towards the surface, and others are refracted uh, deeper. Uh, if you see on your uh, uh, right-hand side, you see a part of seismic section, vertical seismic section, you will find it uh, contain many uh, reflectors, the seismic section, okay, uh, and uh, the major changes in the properties uh, usually produce strong uh, reflector, as you see. So, this why this reflector is stronger than the others because because the acoustic impedance or there there was a drastic change between the acoustic impedance between the two successive uh, rock layers. Uh, also, I'd like to remind you that uh, in, in seismic data, we have 2D seismic data in which we have only vertical sections. Uh, the same number of uh, the, the profiles acquired in, in the field. And <coughs> we have uh, another uh, type of uh, survey, which is a seismic, as a 3D uh, seismic uh, acquisition, which uh, produces. The seismic record, actually, what we record from the field uh, contains two basic elements for the interpreter to study. The first uh, element is the two-way time or the time of arrival of any reflections from geological interfaces or geological surfaces. As if you take a look on this plot here, you have one, two, three bits, so you end up with two uh, interfaces, we will see the first uh, uh, interface only. So if I have the source of energy on the surface, I will have the energy propagate downward that it took about 0.25 uh, seconds and it will reflect from this interface and took about 0.25 seconds. So how many seconds did this uh, uh, two-way time take? Yes, it will be 0.5. So some of you, uh, what, what they did is they add the 0.25 to the other one, or the time of the incidence to the time of the reflections. 
but in seismic uh, section you can just read the value of the two-way time from here okay so it is 0.5 here the the actual depth of this reflector uh, uh, is a function of the thickness of all the overburdened rocks and the velocity of them the second element that we can uh, uh, study or the interpreter study from the seismic uh, uh, data or seismic record are the shape of the reflector so if you see this seismic line here the vertical seismic line and you see you notice this red arrows you can see again the reflector take different shape or different styles and you have different frequencies and different amplitudes in, uh, on, on this section so the shape of the reflection which includes how strong the signal is what frequencies it contains and how the frequencies are distributed over the pulse so two again two main uh, basic elements or two uh, 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 main elements uh, that of importance for the, uh, the interpreter from the seismic record that are the time of arrival which is two-way time and the shape of the reflector So, how the interpretation process goes? The interpretation process can be subdivided into three interrelated categories. So, either I do one category or two categories or the three together. So, it is interrelated categories. So, I either uh, do structure seismic interpretation. Okay, so this is the first category which is a structural seismic interpretation as you see here you have a vertical size vertical seismic section and you see that uh, we put the interpretation of horizons and reflectors and this is just fault system so this is generally a structural interpretation so i i interpret the structure on this uh, vertical seismic section the second category is the seismic sequence stratigraphic interpretation and we will we will talk about this in uh, more details uh, soon so the seismic sequence stratigraphy i i study the pattern or interpret the pattern of the reflectors that represent the depositional style uh, of the sedimentary uh, rocks within this area the third category uh, which is also very important which is a reservoir and the interpretation in which uh, so sometimes we call this reservoir geophysics so we, uh, we sort of uh, enter the reservoir itself and start to study the fluid and the lithology of this reservoir and this is from seismic as well so uh, 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 reservoir uh, and lithology interpretations mainly comes from seismic inversion so if you see these two uh, sections here they have reflectivity which, that have both the two-way time and the, the, the shape of the reflector which includes amplitude and frequency and whatever. But this section in your right hand side is uh, inverted seismic data and the colors you see here represent either rhizology or uh, 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 physical parameters for example like the porosity distribution or whatever. So go for more details on structural seismic interpretation. So it is generally the, the structural seismic interpretation is directed towards the creation of structural maps. So the end product of the structural interpretation is the structural maps of the subsurface from the observed three-dimensional configuration of arrival times. So why it is 3D? Because the maps are 3D uh, plot. So, for example, if I have this vertical section and I have interpreted four uh, successive uh, horizons, as you see here, and the, remember that I'm, 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 I'm saying horizons now. So, I didn't say formation or whatever, because we'll understand when I will uh, uh, call this as a formation or relate this to a geological formation uh, in the coming slides. So, I have four horizons here, green, yellow, blue, and red. Okay, and then after interpretation, not only for only one section like this, but for the whole uh, sections that I have, if it's 2D, or for the whole volume, if I have 
3D and then I will generate a structural map or two-way time map for each of those horizons as you see here. See, it is generally structured contour maps as, as I will show and but I can also color them with a color code to understand which part is as uh, came at later time, which came at earlier time and studies the structural distribution. So going to the evidences of the main geological structures, so if, if we will take uh, almost four of them, so we'll talk about the fault, how faults appear on uh, the seismic data, uh, how faults appear on the seismic data, what is the evidence or signature of the unconformity and the flow structures. We'll, we'll start with the faulting. So uh, if you take a look on this uh, seismic section, which is a vertical seismic section, this axis is a two-way time, Okay, you will see that you have different reflectors of different colors in this case. You have uh, reflectors in, in uh, you have uh, in blue color, red color, and whatever. So it it represents the peaks and the troughs uh, within this reservoir, within this seismic section. But if you follow any of the reflector, you will find that you end up with some terminations. So we have some termination terminations that you see here for the reflectors, and also we have diff a change in depth as well so these terminations and 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 the change in them are two criteria of the presence of faults so when i interpret this i will put the faults at the terminations and i can follow after that the horizons interpretation so determination are false so this is how faults appear on the seismic data so let's see the folding how folding uh, appear on seismic data let's see the folding on the geology from an outcrop so this is uh, these are this is for two folds here anticline and syncline <clears throat> uh, this is from an outcrop okay so how this will appear on seismic data if you have seismic data that represents the subsurface the folding will be clearly shown as you see here so we have uh, this uh, detachment fold so the fold so seismic data represent the structure actually very clear going to one of the important geological structures which is a flow structure and flow means that uh, the rock will flow okay uh, what how this happen it is it happens with sediments and sediments uh, with viscosity like the salt and the anhydrite or evaporites in general so suppose i have this uh, white layer of salt Okay, so this is a salt layer. Salt is mobile uh, and of low de density, okay, and it is not solidified yet. And you have all of this overburden of rocks on top of it. The weight of this overburden push the salt from the two sides, and this salt will be moved and impairs or enter or cut, broken the rocks and uh, uh, distributed as you see here uh, 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 building a salt dome okay the, the salt dome because we have some forces here that it change the shape of the overburden rocks it also broke these rocks causing the generation of some faults which represent very good uh, structural traps so you will you will have traps on both sides of the salt dome because because of the folding shape or the curving that happened the curving shapes that happened to this layer so it, it build up sort of uh, 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 hydrocarbon traps as well as the faults that generated on the top of the uh, salt dome uh, due to the force that it exerted on these rocks so so flow structure is very important because it's around, it, it will be surrounded by hydrocarbon traps. So let's see how these appear on seismic. So take a look on this seismic section. Can you recognize where is the salt dome or the salt intrusion? Yes, here is the salt intrusion. You see how the surrounding layers get curved. It's pushed upward, so it gives me this rims incline or whatever. Okay, so if i interpret this section this is the uh, uh, surrounding uh, sedimentary rocks or, or reflectors and here is the salt wall 
uh, and on top of this sort we will, we will end up with some faults that uh, will generate a sort of hydrocarbon plates. So let's see the force uh, <clears throat> main geological structure and how it does it appear on the seismic bed, which is unconforming. So let's let's first uh, remind you wh uh, what is unconformed. So an unconformity is a surface which at one time was subjected to erosion, either subaerial sub on, on, on shore, for, this is the meaning of subaerial, or submarine, which is underwater, that removed some of this section. So I, I have like sedimentary succession, and, and if this sedimentary succession will uh, subject it to erosion or weathering, so part of these uh, rocks will be uh, broken or gone away, Okay, so the unconformity is characterized by a hiatus. And what is a hiatus? Hiatus is a period of time for which no sediment are present. Okay, and generally speaking, uh, in, in the stratigraphic interpretation, this is a period of missing time. We generally interpret it as unconformity uh, uh, unless we have other evidences that it is no deposition. So uh, let's let's see what 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 also again the importance of unconformity. So let's see how the unconformity appear on the seismic data, and I will uh, <coughs> show you or or tell you wh why it is important. So if you take a look on this seismic section, uh, can you recognize where is the unconformity surface? Uh, yes, we have different type of unconformities, but in this section you have change in the here. So this is almost vertical highly dip, uh, dipping layer and then you have another trend of dipping on the shallower part so this is the surface of the unconformity okay uh, so the importance of the unconformity because it is formed due to weathering or erosion so the, the topmost layer will be broken into uh, 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 pieces so it will contain high porosity and high permeability, which is very good characteristics for uh, a reservoir, for a hydrocarbon reservoir, especially if it is covered after that by sediment that could, could uh, 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 what I mean, form the cap for this reservoir. So now let's talk about the seismic sequence stratigraphic interpretation and understand what is the importance of it. So let's first understand what is sequence stratigraphy as a branch of geology. So the sequence stratigraphy is a branch of a geology that attempts to subdivide and link sedimentary deposits into unconformity bounds units on a variety of scales and explain these stratigraphic units in terms of uh, a variation in sediment, in sediment supply and variation in the rate of a change in accommodation spaces. What? So let's simplify this. If you take a look on this plot here, this is an unconformity surface, and this one, the rich one, is another unconformity surface, and in between, so let's go back to the unconformity. When the unconformity form, when, the, when I have erosion, okay? So suppose that I have high land, and I'm onshore now, so it, I have high land, and uh, the weathering act on it, the erosion act on it, and start to remove some of these uh, uh, rocks, then the sea will invade. Okay, on, on this land, I will have deposits from both sides. I will have deposits from the landward, and I will have deposits from the seaward. Okay, and uh, after uh, the sea, uh, what I mean, transgress and cover all the area, and I have full deposits on the onshore part, uh, then the, the sea will be regressed again, so I'll have regression from the sea, and the 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 ears will will be supposed to, or the rocks will be exposed to another erosion. So I will end up with another unconformity surface. So this is why I have two unconformity surfaces here. The geoscientist uh, studied uh, the deposition along this whole surface, so coming from shore here, from onshore land. To the deep sea in this direction, so they so they they split it into a, a system tracks. So we have the high stand system tracks. When you have some 
for example, coastal and alluvial plain deposits. Uh, then you have transgressive system tracks. Uh, for example, you have some uh, uh, sandstone, marginal sandstone. You can have some marine, whatever, mudstones. And then you go to the low stand system track and you will end up with marine deposition like the carbonate and, and others. So from the, the sequence stratigraphy, I can uh, uh, locate where I can find the source, the petroleum system in general, the source, the reservoir, and uh, the seal or the trap in general. Uh, so on seismic, I can see this system on seismic, okay, from on seismic data itself. So seismic reflections, as you know, are produced by contrasts of in sound velocity between the successive layer. Uh, uh, significant stratal surfaces and unconformities also will will give me this uh, uh, reflection. Therefore, they are considered to approximate timelines in the sedimentary records, the timelines between different uh, uh, sedimentary deposition. The seismic sequence stratigraphic interpretation relates the pattern of the reflection observed to a model of cycle episode of deposition, like uh, this is a transgressive deposition, this is a regressive deposition, this is land deposition, this is fluvial, something like that. Uh, and why it is important, the seismic is, is important, very important because it covers very wide area. Uh, uh, so you can cover several hundred kilometers, several thousands of kilometers by the seismic data. So you can study the sequence stratigraphic system uh, along very big area or very, very wide area. Okay, and on the other hand, the sequence stratigraphic science itself I will understand the petroleum system. So it is important because geological concept of stratigraphy can be applied on seismic data. And hence seismic stratigraphy can be used as a predictive tool for petroleum system elements like reservoir, uh, seal, and source rock. So going to the, th the, the third category, which is the reservoir and the resology interpretation, and in reservoir and resology interpretation, it aimed at determining the changes in poor fluid, porosity, fracture intensity, lithology, where in the reservoir itself, from which from seismic data. So the first point is after I finish the systematic uh, seismic interpretation, either whatever it was one of the three categories to, re to remind you the structure, sequence stratigraphic or, or uh, lithology, lithologic or reservoir and lithologic interpretation. So after I finish the structure and the stratigraphy, I can use seismic attribute or apply seismic attribute on, on my data to refine my interpretation. Seismic attributes, there are hundreds of types of seismic attributes and this is extracted from the seismic data itself. Two main categories for seismic attributes, uh, 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 structural attributes and stratigraphic attributes. For structural attributes, I can extract the structural signature from the seismic data itself. So as you see here, this is what we call a shear diagram. Uh, this one is a vert vertical seismic section normally. Okay, and we notice that we have some faults across this uh, 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 reflector here. So to see the extension of these faults, how, how much they cover the area, we use uh, uh, a horizontal slice, as you see here, and you see now the faults themselves in red color, and you see the basins or the down thrones in this blue color. So this is structural attribute, so it, it enhances my interpretation. Or I can use a stratigraphic interpretation in which I can see the signature or the print imprint of, of, of the footprint of the, the stratigraphic features. Like what you see here is a channel. You see how long is this channel, how it covers the whole study area. You can see some other channels here. So this is what we call stratigraphic trap. So to, 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 to define the reservoir uh, dimensions, for example, or mapping the reservoir, I may use the seismic attributes after applying the structure and stratigraphic uh, interpretation. Uh, the, the most important uh, 
category that uh, or most important application in this category is the seismic inversion. And in seismic inversion, I convert the seismic reflectivity back, back. I invert it back to uh, uh, to the very beginning. How I can how how the tree, the seismic tree is built. It is built from yes the convolution between seismic wavelet with the reflection coefficient and the reflection coefficient came from the equation between the acoustic impedances and the acoustic impedance are just density by velocity so i can invert my reflection back to the petrophysical parameters like the density or velocity and i can relate this with other petrophysical parameters so i can change my data from reflectivity to, for example, uh, uh, impedance is that it is uh, velocity by density. So, the, so, so in, in seismic inversion, it is like we have a lot of algorithms that are capable to uh, exploiting the information derived from uh, the, the, the seismic data itself and clustering the rocks based on their uh, rock properties. So, how I can, how 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 can I do my seismic interpretation, or what is the seismic interpretation workflow? So to to start uh, uh, seismic interpretation, you should have a base map, seismic sections, available wells, velocity data from wells, formation top of the wells, logs and the reports. So what's the base map? The base map is a very it's very important. The base map is a map that I put the program that I acquired, uh, I designed uh, uh, and acquired before. So if you take a look on this map, this is a 2D base map you have. So I know where are the lines and what are the, who, which line is intersect to which line and so on. So I should have this base map to know geographically where are my lines. Uh, and it is the data, the, the base map that I use to acquire the data from the very beginning. Uh, of course, I should have the seismic sections. So uh, to interpret, if I don't have seismic section, I will interpret nothing. Okay, so if I have wells encountered my area, it will be very good that I will get some hard geological information and use it with my seismic either in the interpretation as you will see or in the inversion as we just saw. Okay, so also I need velocity because the seismic data is recorded in time. Okay, I need velocity to, to convert it into depth. So I can use different type of velocity information either from wells as I will show you or from velocity maps. Also the different logging uh, 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 curves or uh, if, if I have like weird looks uh, uh, that acquired or uh, uh, in, in the wells so it will be very important to give me geological so at the first step is to loading the data so I, sh I get the data from the processing center that I, I have to check the headers and know the XY so uh, if it is 2D I, I, I may have different vintages from the 2D. And I have to check uh, the, the navigation of this data because suppose I'm in China, for example, and I use a different navigation system or positioning system. So my data could be in Asia, in, in, in Africa, for example. Okay, so I should uh, uh, QC my parameters in loading the data. For the 3D, as you know, I will have inlines, I will, uh, uh, load the data as inline I will, and the X line, uh, uh, you know, will be, uh, it, is, it is coming from the processing. So I will have inline and X line. So let's see uh, 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 an example. So if I have this uh, uh, base map, which is a 2D base map, I have about uh, five intersected sections together. So you will see that all lines are not straight, they are corrugated. Okay, and what, what I have on this uh, base map, you will see the north direction, you will have the, the scale, and you, you see the name of each line in the two ends of the line, and these tiny numbers are the short points. Okay, so I know from here 
the the line name I know from where the the shot point starts and where it ends okay and the intersection point so if I choose part of this line and see it on my screen and the workstation so I will have the vertical seismic section as you see two-way time axis here and I have the direction this is the south direction and this is the north direction I can read the CMB is the CDB number or the shot point number and check on the base map does it represent the south or it is flipped so I have to QC that okay I have the intersections here and this is the name of them so I have to use the scale bar to estimate the length of the line and use the, the CDB numbers or the shot point numbers uh, to check the orientation of the line in the accompanying map this was in for for two for three D. I will have the three D uh, uh, base maps like this. I have the in lines and the cross lines. So if if I choose a cross line like this, and then I plot it, I will end up with a vertical section that have the two way time on the vertical axis, and also I will have like the directions as you see here, and I have, will have the here the header uh, the in line and cross line. No, so I have to check it also. Okay, so if I have the seismic data which is recorded in two-way time, okay, and I have the reflections here, uh, how can I know which reflection is this? So how can I know the depth of this reflector, for example? So to know the depth, what, what I'm recorded in depth in the field is if I have well so for example if I have well in this area <coughs> the depth is recorded in meters and if you take a look here you, at, at this time of the reflector which is 0.58 seconds this is corresponding to 926 meters so what tie the meters with the seconds what tie the depth is with uh, uh, time yes it is the velocity so I should have velocity to convert this time scale into depth scale or to understand what depths are for each reflector so, so, so I need velocity so how can I get velocity I have several ways to get velocity the first uh, one uh, is the poor hole seismic and in poor hole seismic I, I have a drilled well, okay, so I know the depths, and I can, uh, uh, like, I put receivers at certain depths on, within this hole, okay, and I can have, have a source of energy at the, so, at the, at the surface, and then when I emit the energy, this sound energy will travel through the, the poor hole, and it will be received by the position. So I will know that I know the depth of this receiver, and I will count or, or measure the time. So I will have depths and time. So I will end up with time depth pairs, time at different depth levels. So it, it will be a time depth pair. So I have time and I have depths. I can estimate the velocity. So the first uh, uh, survey or the first measurement is called the check shot survey. And it's a type of borehole seismic data, which is designed to measure the seismic travel time from the source at the surface, okay, to a receiver at certain depths. Okay, uh, as you know, the B wave will be uh, propagate and encounter the will the will bore, and then I will measure the time for this. Okay, so this is a check shot survey. So I may do this measurement for few number of uh, dip, at few number of depths, but if I have like a continuous reading, I will have, I, I will be talking about the vertical seismic profiling or the VSP. So the, the output of the check shot survey is time depth pairs, okay, or, or table, and one of the output of the VSP is this time depth curve, but for VSP, I have different types of VCB actually and I, I, I will have also some seismic data that can splice with my surface seismic data 
So the difference between the borehole seismic is, as you see here, I have the source on the surface, yes, but I can, I can record the downgoing energy at certain depths and also the reflected energy. But for the seismic, uh, uh, the surface seismic, which is a normal seismic, I, I have both the receivers and the source at the surface of the X. Okay. For the VCB, I can like um, see the reflections deeper than the hole. And this is what we call look ahead VCB. So the main difference is that the output of the vertical seismic profile is could be seismic data plus the TD curve and also we read like continuously every 12 and, and, and 12 uh, meter or 25 meter or whatever. So suppose that I couldn't do any of this velocity survey, which what is a velocity survey? Are the check shot and VSP or any, any velocity measure in the home? We've got two examples of them. So suppose I don't have this, so I have to generate my seismic trace. So I will use what's called the synthetic seismogram. And the synthetic, synthetic seismogram is one of the forward modeling of the seismic data. So I, I build a trace from where I can build the trace. You know, if I have a well, I will uh, uh, record or log on it the sonic log and the density log. The so sonic log give me the velocity. It, it, it measures delta T and I can convert it into velocity. So with the sonic log, that is measured uh, uh, in reference to the depth and it measures velocity so I can generate two uh, uh, scales here a uh, time and its corresponding depth okay also so I can get the velocity from the sonic and I can acquire density log on which I can get the den density so I have velocity and density which is a component of the acoustic impedance I will multiply the the both together it will I will the product will be the acoustic impedance then I can calculate the reflection coefficient and then I can extract a wavelet from the seismic data or use uh, any any uh, uh, what I mean are artificial uh, wavelet and convolve this wavelet with the reflection coefficient I will end up with a seismic trace that can I splice on my seismic data and know the formation tops know which the, this reflector is corresponding to which geological formation okay and also at the time because the seismic data is in time so why why i do i have the gamma ray here thus to a quality control to low valley solution so this is a synthetic seismogram and it is it is generating a seismic trace from the well log data So after I finish that, I can splice the uh, the the uh, synthetic seismogram in, in the well location on the seismic data and interpret as you see here uh, the the formations that I have. So it is it is nearly the same like the the, the the previous slide, but here to understand how I follow up or interpret the horizons due to using the synthetic seismogram that I generated from the well logs. So let's proceed and understand how, how can I distribute or uh, follow up my interpretation from the first well that I interpreted uh, using the well location to the rest of my uh, uh, survey or the rest of my lines in case of 2D. We are using uh, a, a process called loop tying. So if I have these uh, uh, six intersected lines, I will start from the, the first line that I have geological information and then uh, follow up across the whole area as, as you see. So I will have like a, a loop here, loop there and loop and, and whatever. So I, 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 I go from a line to, the, to the, uh, the intersected line to another intersected line and back to the first line and keep this is this looping across the whole survey. So suppose I have uh, this sort of uh, base map and I'll pick this line, which is called line 103 for, for this example. If you take a look on this vertical section, have you seen some of the uh, uh, geologic evidences on this seismic data? 
that we discussed before yes yes you have the terminations here this means that i have a fault in this area if i interpret the fault i will, I will name it i will give it a name so it i give it fault a for example then no, i will the, see the intersected line, line the so I, intersected I'll, line i have so if this is one or three that i interpret it's a fault on i will uh, for example have the, get the, inter, the, the the line that intersected with it which is 201, this is 201, you can recognize that determination are there. But does this the same fault or not? How can I do this? I, I read here in the top of the of my seismic section, uh, the line intersections, okay? So this is the place of uh, 201 intersection, for example. Then I will fold my section at this location, okay? It will be like this. And I I have my uh, line the 201 where 103 is intersected with it intersected with it at this position. So I have to splice this part into this point here and see the intersection and copy the interpretation. So I splice it here. I copy the interpretation. Then I have default uh, uh, location as you see here. Okay, and then I will. Continue with uh, the next intersected line for example i have 102 now with 201 i will repeat what i did fold it at the intersection position and then tie to the other line at the location then i end up with the two points that you see here so yes this termination i'm sure now that it is belongs to fold a so i have to keep this uh, uh, on my map mark it on my map so at the end as these intersections i i i have four uh, so let's go to the horizon so if i have one or three i have this yellow horizon here okay i will go to another uh, 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 this is for example i can start with 201 again but i go to 204 just to show you that i can uh, move across the uh, uh, intersected line so you see this rectangle here so this is these are the location of the intersection of the line so i again displace one i will fold one of them and displace it to the other and then start to copy the interpretation and follow it up across the line and keep the uh, lines that i have okay and finally after that i that i interpret the false horizon across the whole uh, seismic section. So let's see a complicated uh, structural section, for example. So this is another. This is a section from different area, uh, and I have a well like here, or here, and then I get the information. Then we will interpret the line and end up with this. So this is one line with the loop. I will uh, repeat this for whole, uh, for the whole surveys that I have, or all the lines that I have. So after finishing that or after interpreting all the horizons that I want and all the faults that I pick, I will uh, generate, if it is a structural interpretation, what I will do, I will generate the structural map, which is a two-way time map. So first, I will post the time values of each horizon uh, at, at different map, for example. Let's choose one horizon. So if I have one horizon, I will bring the base map and then read the time value from the vertical section and post it on the map, okay? And then after that, I read this for each line that I have, I will end up with numbers of two-way time, which I will contour, as you see here. And after contouring, I can smooth or whatever, or give it, instead of the contours, I can give it colors. So I will end up with uh, maps that have, this, this map, for example, has both, contours and colors and this is have again contours and colors so I have the faults and I have my two-way time okay so this is the seismic two-way structure maps of certain horizon these are in time okay uh, but when I decide to drill a well I need to to drill a well to a depth to a certain depth which is reservoir depth or the target depth. So I, I will need to convert my time maps into depth. I want to convert my seismic time maps into depth. 
So generally speaking, to convert the time reflection uh, to a depth surface, we need to know the velocity, as we mentioned before. So the depth is then estimated simply, very simply, from this equation, the depth is equal velocity multiplied by time. So if I have my uh, two-way time map as uh, this map here, I should get velocity by any mean, either from the wells, from uh, uh, the poor hole seismic, from whatever sources. So either I have, if I have velocity from different wells, I can generate velocity maps. If I have only one well, I can end up with uh, like a, a, a velocity curve uh, built by uh, a certain uh, uh, formulas or equations, okay? And I will simply, what I'm going to do after this, yes, simply I want to apply the time by the velocity and it will, I will end up with my depth map, okay? There are other different types of maps like the ISO, ISO core map, and this in this map, we map the true vertical thickness between two seismic horizons. Uh, or I can use the isochronous map in which I have the vertical time, not thickness, the vertical time uh, between two horizons. Or I have the geologic isopach map, or isopac map, which displays the stratigraphic thickness between uh, an upper and lower horizons. And this uh, Figure here uh, represent how I can if I if I have no dip so the isochrone will equal the isochronous or whatever so it depends on the type of map depends on the depth that I have on my data uh, so I, I generate a lot of maps to understand the subsurface geology of my so what are the goals uh, uh, to wrap up what are the goals uh, for seismic interpretation that used for hydrocarbon exploration? Uh, so the first the goal is to build a geologic framework, subsurface geologic framework. And this subsurface geologic framework is both a structural and a stratigraphic framework. Okay, this will be followed by to identify prospect elements, the petroleum system that I have. Do I have the source rock? Do I have the migration in this area? Where are the reservoir rock and how they are distributed? The traps and the seal, do I have vertical and lateral seals on. Uh, uh, are all these elements favorable to for hydrocarbon uh, generation and accumulation? Then I will go to uh, assess the highest potential prospect across those ones that I identify and then calculate the volume of the oil or gas or, or both if I have both or have condensate or whatever. We, and, and check the risk that I have. Finally, I will calculate the economy and then locate the well to drill and then uh, if I success, if I get successful on this drilling, I will have a production uh, equipment and produce hydrocarbon. With this, I include my uh, presentation for you with an overview of seismic data interpretation. There are a lot, there is a lot on seismic data interpretation, but this is just one hour for an overview of seismic data. I will be happy uh, to answer any question you have. These are my uh, uh, contacts. Thank you.